The Firm, India's only show on corporate law, tax and audit matters. Hello and welcome to The Firm. On the show this week, the many twists in the SR Oil delisting story and SEBI's unprecedented minority price protection move. And the revenue neutral rate, exemptions, sectoral impact and all things GST. All right, let's get to the top story this week. The Ruia family have run into rough weather as they attempt to take group company SR Oil private. Changing regulations, a half-cooked stake sale and unprecedented price protection for minority shareholders. Ayush Alawadi gets you the details. The story dates back to June 28, 2014, when SR Oil received a proposal from its promoters to voluntarily delist from the exchanges. The company obtained shareholder approval through a special resolution by postal ballot on August 6, 2014. The company also received in-principle approval from NSE in August 2014. But SEBI raised objections and the process stalled. By the time SEBI approved the delisting in July 2015, the delisting regulations had changed. And so, even though SR Oil's delisting process began when the 2009 regulations were in force, SEBI ordered SR's promoters to comply with the 2015 regulations. Since this uh, case began uh, when the board and the shareholders approved uh, the uh, delisting under the previous uh, regulations before the amendments, uh, technically there is a case to be made out that uh, the uh, pre-amendment regulations is uh, what should apply. Uh, but having said that, uh, in the SR oil case, the uh, question became somewhat moot because the company itself uh, accepted the fact that they were willing to be bound by the new regulations. So to that extent, uh, this question is uh, less relevant, but otherwise it's my belief that uh, there's an argument to be made that it's the old regulations that should apply. That's especially because the delay was prompted by SEBI. In its order, SEBI says it received shareholder complaints in August 2014. One alleging the company was concealing public information and another suggesting that some public shareholders were acting in concert with SR's promoters to facilitate the delisting. The order cites these as reasons for stalling the delisting approvals but is silent on why it took SEBI one year to investigate and grant approval. On 14th of August of 2014, you said no, through the stock exchange, please don't proceed. Now you wait for such a long period of time, nearly 6 to 8 months, in June, July of 2015, and then say yes, you can now proceed. What were the change circumstances, on what basis did you allow then the company to proceed? There is nothing in the order as to what were the change circumstances except there is a whisper that those two letters written by the shareholders does not have any meat in it uh, and that uh, they are of no consequences. But one doesn't know as to what were the circumstances when SEBI said no and what were the circumstances why it stated yes. SR Oil's promoters have not disputed SEBI's application of the new regulations to their case. Not yet at least. That means they now have to comply with a new acceptance threshold, a new final offer price determination process and a change in the formula for determining the floor price. Earlier, the floor price was to be determined as the highest of the average closing prices during the past 26 weeks or two weeks. But under the 2015 regulations, the floor price is the volume-weighted average price in the 52 weeks preceding the delisting public announcement. It's a complete change. So the floor price undergoes a change. So SEBI has said in its order that please go ahead with the new floor price without checking as to whether the old uh, floor price was beneficial to the minority shareholder, to an individual investor shareholder or the new price uh, is beneficial. And that really is at the heart of this story, minority protection. Apart from insisting that the new regulations apply, SEBI has also ordered a new twist in the delisting tale. While awaiting SEBI's approval for delisting, in about July this year, SR Oil informed the stock exchanges that Russian oil major Rosneft was looking to buy a 49% stake from the promoters. The deal was in the works, even as the delisting was pending. When that news broke, minority shareholders approached SEBI and the regulator gave them unprecedented price protection. 
In its order on November 6, 2015, SEBI directed SR Oil and its promoters to match the delisting price with that being paid by Rosneft for a 49% stake in the company. SEBI said that if the deal with Rosneft concludes after the delisting and if the price offered by Rosneft is higher than the delisting price achieved via reverse book building, then the promoters of SR will be required to pay the differential price to the shareholders within two months. The positive aspect of this order is that uh, uh, SEBI has, uh, in a sense, uh, accepted the fact that uh, certain other information, such as the deal with the Russian investors, ought to be taken into account while determining uh, the share price. So even though the regulations themselves only provide for reverse book building, SEBI has superimposed this requirement that the price should be at least equal to what is being offered to the SR promoters by the Russian investors. So to, to that extent, the uh, order actually goes beyond what the uh, regulations themselves uh, require. So to that extent, I feel it is a positive uh, aspect. But the Rosneft deal, if it happens, will quite likely change the fortunes of SR Oil. Since such a material event took place after shareholders had approved the delisting, but before the delisting concluded, shouldn't shareholder approval be sought again? After a rejection order, the entire process ought to have started all over again. Because under the chain scenario, at the very threshold, after having uh, negated the proposal, the shareholders could have thought differently and could have voted against, in which event the entire delisting process could not have started at all. Because the shareholders would also start thinking that, look, we have granted approval for the company, to, uh, for the promoter to go ahead with the delisting process, but the regulator is saying, please don't go ahead, in which event the investor has to think, did I exercise my vote in a proper manner or did I have adequate information that I said yes? I am not uh, extremely concerned about these aspects because there are also other mechanisms uh, that are in place. For, so the shareholders are not out of the loop completely because they still have the option of determining the reverse book building price and under the uh, post amendment regulations it is also the case that at least 25% of the shareholders will have to accept the offer. So some of these mechanisms and protections for the shareholders still continue to operate even though uh, it, uh, it, it it may not be the case that uh, they may go back and get the approval of the shareholders all over again. SEBI's order suggests that SR's promoters proposed a time limit. That is, if the Rosneft deal were to happen within one year of the delisting, then the minority shareholders would be compensated. But in the interest of minority shareholders, SEBI decided to keep the price protection open-ended. So even if the Rosneft deal were to happen, say, three or five years after the delisting, the minority could stand to gain. Both the price protection and that it's open-ended set an interesting precedent. Each time, somebody will have to write to this to SEBI to say that in the event there is a deal which happens in the next 12 months or 6 months or 24 months, the in individual investor should benefit. I mean, if the uh, deal price is more than the deal listing price in the next 12 months or 24 months, then the promoter of the company which is whose shares are sought to be delisted should pay the differential. It is not that it is already an enactment. It is not that it is already embodied in the delisting regulation. So in which event, yes, it has a persuasive value, but somebody will have to appeal to the uh, to SEBI to say that look, please uh, pass an order to the effect that in the event in the next 24 months or in 12 months, if the promoter sells the share uh, sells the shares of the company to somebody else at a price which is higher than the delisting price, then please pay to the shareholders who have participated in the delisting process the differential between the two. So it is not that it becomes a precedent. It is not that it has become a law. There will have to be an order because it's not embodied in the regulation. The optimistic point here is that uh, the SEBI order c considers uh, extra extraneous circumstances, uh, such as the fact that uh, the deal with the Russian investor was going to be, uh, uh, you know, entered into. So, to that extent, I think the presidential value of this uh, order would be that uh, these types of uh, factors can be considered considered by SEBI. 
uh, at the time of uh, pricing, uh, uh, fixing the price. So to that extent, I think uh, this is a, a positive order. Again, uh, I would not be too optimistic about this because, as I mentioned, uh, if uh, uh, somebody were to challenge uh, the, this kind of a position, uh, it, it may be argued that this is beyond the scope of the uh, regulations which are premised on the reverse book building process. So uh, I think the downside of this could be, one may argue that unless the regulations themselves have uh, ha are to be changed, uh, this position may not be ultimately sustainable. SR's promoters currently hold nearly 71.5% of the company's shares and need 18.5% for the delisting to succeed. This week they announced a floor price of nearly 146 rupees, which is 40% lower than Friday's closing price. It'll be interesting to see how SR's public shareholders respond to the delisting offer, given the price protection they've already been afforded. But it'll be even more interesting to see the future impact of this order. Will other shareholders also demand such price protection? In Mumbai, Ayush Alavadi. Well, that's the twist in the SR Oil delisting tale. We're going to take a quick break on the firm, but when we come back, the revenue neutral rate, exemptions, sectoral impact, and all things GST.